Hey guys, welcome back. So what a what a weird day today. Um, I was really chasing so many different tickers today. I felt like um, luckily we ended the day green somehow, uh, and but we didn't trade that many overall trades. I think I did eight trades today, but we traded six different tickers. So you can kind of get the feel for how all over the place I was. I think on Monday. Um, we traded like three different tickers and I did like 28 different trades. So it was a bit more on reverse from what we were seeing on Monday. There's definitely several interesting setups and trades I want to review with you guys today. And then also, you know, IMV and PRCP, are those going to be potential late day runners or maybe uh, overnight swings? Oh. <laughs> overnight swings. What we do know is yesterday with EQ just absolutely shooting up in the afternoon and then extended hours. Maybe we will see something like that today. So let's go in the charts and think about what could be a good setup for an afternoon run. All right, guys, don't forget to drop a like if you enjoy the content. Consider subscribing if you're new. We go live every morning starting at 9.15 a.m. to review the watch list and trade the market open. Love to see you there. Let's go to the charts for now and then maybe trade the afternoon. What is up, lovely people? So Jesus, what? Oh, man, I'm not gonna lie. Like I was, I was a little indecisive today, and it's not entirely my fault. The stocks were a little bit all over the place. Um, the lead gappers or the best stocks to be trading switched a lot. So let me quickly close this. Um, you can see here we traded a lot today. Usually I don't trade this many tickers. I've been here one, two, three, four, five, six tickers today. Um, you know, some we won on, some we gave back, and PRCP, the one that I was like. I have a bad feeling about this stock. I don't really want to trade it, yada, yada. I guess what I do, I go to trade a breakout and uh, I gave back um, actually quite a bit on this one. I gave back like 70 bucks on this trade because I was up 20 bucks on it. And then that one trade, um, we gave back like 8% because it was a huge flush to the downside. The only thing I did right, again, was use smaller position size. So using small position size pre-market and when I don't feel super comfortable is always a good thing. You, sometimes you still want to get into the trade because you don't want to miss the trade and then have FOMO and then enter a bad trade later on, yada, yada. That's actually what happened with PRCP. So it's good sometimes to still trade, even if it's not a perfect setup. But uh, just know if it's not a perfect setup, use smaller size. I would have loved to use bigger size today. We really didn't trade more than $1,500 um, share size. So you know, we, you know, even though we made 50 bucks today and we were up like $120 today at one point, it still wasn't really anything too crazy. So we were probably up like 9% based on our average position size. But if, you know, if we started trading with those $10,000, like I've been talking about, you know, we would be, it would be a $900 day. Um, so at, at one point, so let's, let's, you know, work a little bit harder to that. I'm not, I'm really talking to myself here. I, I want to work a little bit harder to get to that bigger position size. Um, it's really just all about kind of feeling comfortable with it. And I have been feeling more comfortable with it. You know, we've had some trades now at 2,300 and I think we'll probably have some trades at 3,000 before the end of the month. So it's definitely, you know, getting there. And I, there is, I guess, no really reason to rush into it, but it, it is a good thing to, um, you know, pursue and you know work towards actively so let's kind of get started here let's just talk about you know through the tickers i think the first one i was trading was um imv pre-market we got a nice little little booger trade on this one um imv was really the lead gapper on the day um but it really did not perform very nicely so let's let's kind of see here what happened where where did it go wrong imv 55 million percent float you know, that's that's a big float. It's a Canadian biotech with rapid progress news on coronavirus vaccine testing um, program. So, you know, hot, hot catalysts on that one. I gave it a kind of a ranking of a seven out of my 10 um, aggressive uh, sheet, um, which I have a recap video on if you guys are interested in that. Um, but basically, you know, the whole move on this one started at about seven o'clock and then it and then it ended. Um, I was thinking that, okay, well, it had a beautiful move here pre-market at about seven. We broke out, you know, pulled back, broke out again, pulled back. This was just a continuous, absolutely ridiculous run right here, um, about 50%. And then we started consolidating. And then when we started consolidating, I was like, okay, well, um, this might be a good, you know, ripe time to start trading this one again. So if you kind of come back here, um, you know, we had a nice breakout here, big volume, uh, and then sell volume was fading. And I was like, okay, this looks really good. Um, for a continuation. Let's see if we can break past this high here at about $8. That's what I want. Um, so I bought the uh, next pullback here at 77.9 and 
then it did not continue. And luckily, I got really lucky on this. I actually placed the sell order at 79 as, you know, momentum was fading and I luckily got an entry uh, because it pulled back kind of aggressively right afterwards. I mean, this this dip was like 6% right away and I, that would have been kind of annoying. We would have been down like 60 bucks um, right out of the gates. It would have been like, ah, oh, like, uh, thank God that didn't happen. So let's kind of fast forward here and I'm like, okay, well maybe, you know, we're going to get a second entry on this one because VWAP is holding here um, you can, or not holding, but you can see big support here at $7 kind of holding. We didn't really dip below it. So again, I bought the pullback on this one, was looking for a continuation, uh, didn't get it. And again, got kind of uh, snuck on this one. This one, I was down like $21 and I was kind of annoyed. I was like, that's a little bit of a shame. I mean, for a lead gapper to just kind of be drifting here to the downside isn't really what we want to be seeing. And I think that's oftentimes a big foreshadow of, you know, what's it, uh, what's to come. So let's see, IMV pulled back here pre-market. We hit a low here about 63 or 65. I wanted to buy this into like the 55, 57 zone because I wanted red to green move and I felt like it was overextended. Um, didn't get an entry and then it runs up 15%. And I was like, ah, oh, you know, that was the trade I wanted. Um, so I missed this entry by like a few cents, kind of ridiculous. Um, let's go a little bit further here. This was an ascending channel, very bullish sign. Um, we find some support here at 470. Uh, we were talking about that during the stream, but I don't know, at no point I was really too excited to be trading IMV uh, anymore. I don't know. Will we trade this one again? If we look at the long-term chart, how do we want to kind of approach IMV? Because IMV is still one of the lead gappers on the day and RIGL, RIGL hasn't really been doing too much. So we, we see big support here at $4. You can see here we had a big dip and then $4 was retested. So maybe we the price will crack this kind of $450 zone and keep marching all the way down to $4. If that happens, maybe I will um, get a little bit aggressive on this one again. I'll put an alert here now at 4.5. Um, you know, nothing's guaranteed and there's, there's really no saying if it's gonna pull down here, but it could happen. And I think an entry around $4 or like 390, or something like that, um, I would probably be willing to trade it in that area and maybe even hold overnight. But I don't know. I mean, you know, has macro news, has the micro trend of the overall coronavirus, um, you know, first big um, day here. It, it could it could be interesting, but um, especially with the 55 million float, I don't really see this thing falling off a cliff uh, just yet. So let's, let's see how we want to trade this one. Um, you know, maybe in the afternoon, maybe it's going to pick up again. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Let's, let's go here to RIGL. This is actually the stock we made the most on today, which was kind of ironic because um, I feel like at no point was I really trading this one, you know, really good. Um, 168 million float, US biotech, coronavirus news, UK trial treatment. Um, so this one popped up on our scanner a little bit late here. Uh, yeah, so, so this one, you know, opens up pretty aggressively, gets halted. I buy the halt on the way down at about 4.18, uh, and then we sell here around 4.3, very small move, and then it you know breaks higher. I was hoping for that break higher, but I took my profits too soon. I should have held this one a little bit longer, but you know, Friday, Monday, and yesterday, I was getting whacked because I was just getting sh stiffed so hard because um, I'd be buying these breakouts and they wouldn't break out, and that's why you know this week, I think I'm even red this week still by like just a small amount of money, like 30 bucks or so. But um, it's just, it's been a shaky week for me. Yesterday, we, you know, we had a pretty strong week besides, you know, ending Friday a bit red. But um, yesterday, I think I ended the day $10 positive. Um, today, you know, $50 positive. And then Monday was really the big whacker where I lost like $140. So yeah, I think we are actually more red than I thought I was probably like, um, like 80, 90 bucks red, which again, it's not a big deal, it's small size. Um, but um, yeah, I, I'm definitely, you know, I haven't really found my groove yet this week, although I could find it at any moment. Um, and I think, you know, maybe tomorrow, if we have a little bit more, you know, energy into, into the market, maybe um, pre-market, nothing too explosive happens, or if it does, it's maybe closer to eight o'clock um, into the market open, so we could have some real gap and goes, just like RIGL. Um, I was not looking at this one though, out of the gates, I was too focused on all of the other tickers. Um, it would have been really nice to snack this one a little bit more, uh, get aggressive here. Um, yeah, actually another one that we kind of got that was on WIMI. You guys probably remember WIMI. It was our lead gapper from, I think it was, I don't know, several days ago. Um, this one, yeah, so what was that two days ago? Wait, hold on. I'm totally messed up with my time zones or, or time frame right now. It's, 
Uh, it's Tuesday today, so yeah, Monday. Um, Monday, Monday, Monday. Let me think about this for a second. So Monday we were... No, Monday we're green. So actually, we're green this, we're, we're green this week. I, I totally got... I, I, I like made up a day in my head. I don't know. I'll have to look at that. I'll have to go to my trade journal and kind of think about this again. Where am I? Um, yeah, so okay, we are green for the week. Um, that's pretty cool. That actually makes me feel a lot better. Um, okay, so yeah, um, WIMI, we were pulling back here. Big support about 1840, uh, a little bit lower. Uh, and then, you know, we started pulling up here and... Uh, you know, right above VWAP, we got this pullback. I got the entry on it. I sold this one um, a little bit too soon, but you know, I probably only missed out like two cents or uh, two percent or so on this one. So I, I didn't really mind this one. Um, plus, I didn't really trust WIMI uh, at all in this area. I knew it was going to be a shaky one today. It wasn't a leak gap or anything. It's just kind of like a leftover trade, uh, as a ticker. You know, it's had two big uh, green days and today it has no volume. So I want to be careful on this. I had a feeling that it could break out higher here, but I didn't think it would be necessarily strong. Um, so yeah, we had a nice little trade on this one. So it really shows like today, it, like my two most profitable stocks weren't even really, um, I wasn't even really trading that great. CRVS, um, another ticker that we bought one of those um, lower dips on CRVS, kind of like FDEK earlier. So CRVS, um, I had a limit order on this one. We had big support. Honestly, showing this trade on the daily makes more sense. So um, this was a multi-day runner um, from the starting on the 7th and or not a really multi-day runner, but a big breakout here. And then, you know, we had one, two, three, four days of pullback. And today was actually another day. So five days of pulling back. We had the 180 day moving average as support here. So I entered, I bought this at 355, bigger support zone, and then, you know, sold it into basically the first bounce um, after that. We actually broke above VWAP. So I probably, you know, could have took another four cents uh, a profit on this one. But, you know, the fact that I was already up like three, four percent, I was like, okay, whatever. Like, um, that's really all I wanted. Again, just, you know, small position size. So I feel like I'm repeating myself too much on that one. BLNK. Whew, yeah, we were all over the place today with tickers. Um, BLNK. Um, but overall with trades, you know, like I said, like I showed before, the overall trades we did today, only eight trades is really, really a small amount. I mean, yesterday we had 24 trades. On Friday, we had 19 trades. It's just been um, kind of a hot um, hot run. And now I remember, the reason I thought yesterday, there, we were on Wednesday is because Monday we had like, I feel like we had two days. I had the morning trading session and the afternoon trading session. This is why I was so confused. The morning trading session, we ended red. We ended like $90 red or something, $84 or something. Then I started off afternoon trading with EQ absolutely exploding. And that's when I got a really, really nice uh, trade uh, trade in. Actually, at first we were down again, we were down like 130 and then I went all the way to the green. That's why I was so confused. So I ended the overall day green, um, but I, I had like two trading sessions in general. Um, BLNK, you can see that, you know, just like, just like CRVS, we had a similar kind of dip here. And that's why I entered this one. Oops, let me see here, scrolling back. Sorry guys, sometimes I click too many buttons at once. So um, BLNK, we pulled back um, to $5, oftentimes a very, very key support zone. I front run this a little bit at 516 right in this area. And then we started bouncing higher. I actually sold this one way, way, way too soon. Uh, I sold it kind of in this area as we were approaching the EMA, took my profits, actually even way too early. I took my profits at 25, kind of ridiculous how early I took profits on this one. Um, yeah, I only walked away with like, what, 10 cents a share? That's really ridiculous. Um, it, you know, pulled back one more time here and then ever since then it's been really, you know, having a pretty decent rally. So I, sh I probably should have stuck with this one a little bit more. I mean, I know what I'm trying to do here. I know that I'm looking for a longer um, term kind of support line. Uh, bounces and maybe I should hold these a little bit longer. So something to kind of consider. Um, but at the same time, I don't expect these usually to go off in the mornings. I usually expect them to go off pre-market. And when they go off in the mornings, they're interfering with my day trading, my real day trading. Uh, so sometimes I just close them out so I don't have to think about them anymore. And that's kind of a big reason why I close these kind of big support bounces out early. I don't know. I just, they kind of mess with my head sometimes. Um, so I, I might even like move that to a different account again. I don't know. I'll have to think about that. Um, so yeah, we talked about IM, uh, IMV and then PRCP. If you guys were in the live stream, you, this was the last trade on the day and you guys probably remember this one, PRCP. This, after this trade is when I threw in the towel. I was like, I'm all over the place today. Like, I, I'm going to stop right here. 
Um, so PRCP, the, the reason I didn't like this one that much is because it had like this, you know, EV electric vehicle news, but it seemed like it wasn't really, um, you know, holding the stock up that well. So we had a, you know, big explosive move, but then it pulled back 40% from pre-market highs. Usually when you see those kind of pullbacks, there's something else going on and, you know, it tends to not perform that well the rest of the day. And that's kind of what we were seeing here. So I don't know. The one thing I did like about it was that 10 million float, but Again, like, like I said, I was just overall very cautious on this one and, and didn't really want to trade that. At, at one point, we were breaking here back above VWAP. We had this really nice breakout here, and then we had a one, two, three, four kind of red candle dip, almost like a two candle dip, but I guess you could start the red candle here, and then you know we're trending downwards. I bought this dip a little bit too early. We bounced back up. Luckily, you know I sold near the high here, took my profit. It was a small profit. It was like 2% or so. Um, and I was like, oh man, you know, I really, I'm not feeling PRCP at all. Um, uh, but then what do I do? We break out higher here and I, I freaking buy the breakout at 43. Um, it doesn't break out and then, you know, crashes from here 9%. And I pretty much sell at 603. So I take a pretty sweet loss on this one. I think I took like a 6% loss or so. Um, so yeah, I mean, kind of annoying that, on a stock where I was saying, I don't really want to trade this one. I don't really like how this one's performing. That's actually the one I get aggressive on. I buy the breakout on and then it flushes down. I've been getting caught in flushes so much these last three days that it's getting a little irritating. Um, but you know, it's my fault. I shouldn't be trading breakouts on stocks that aren't really that hot. Now PRCP is actually pulling up again and this is actually starting to look good again. So maybe PRCP, I don't want to be overly biased on. I, you know, it's not saying that I'm, I wouldn't trade it. Um, but at the time right here with the big sell volume and, uh, I don't know, kind of acting weird on the level two, I shouldn't really be trading it, but let's think about this for a second longer PRCP, you know, is this a stock that we want to be trading today? Um, you know, we have big resistance here at seven, but then if we break past seven, which we are right now, maybe we're going to run all the way to $8. And then if we break $8, maybe we're going to hit $9. I mean, this, there is good upside potential on this one. Um, let's quickly review that catalyst again. Yeah, receives new order support upcoming electric vehicle launch. This company has a $67 million uh, market cap right now. And three automated inline measuring solutions. Yeah, I would have to check this article a little bit more, see how big this deal is and maybe get a bigger scope of how powerful this could be. It would be nice to see some sort of um, price on that order. Um, that usually is a little bit more revealing and then you can kind of get a better estimate. Sometimes if, you know, if it's a big order from a big company or the government and, you know, it's a $200 million order and the stock price or the market cap of this company is only 60 to mine, 9 million, um, you know, that's, that's when things get really exciting. That's when you get those really explosive moves. Um, but right now, I think the volume on PRCP is actually some of the most we've been seeing, I mean, besides the spike right here. Um, again, just really watch out because PRCP has been flushing down really, really hard. So I don't really want to get stuck in one of those. I wouldn't probably trade this one full size. Um, well, I don't know. I'll think about it. Uh, if, if I trade it, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. You guys will know tomorrow in the, by the stream for sure. But um, for now, I'm not convinced, let's just say. But if I see a really good five minute setup, if this thing starts breaking over 775 uh, or 74, this one gets really, really hot. I mean, I don't see why I wouldn't trade it. But for now, I'll see how, how I want to trade it or see what I want to do. I'll take a quick little break and then uh, kind of come back into things. All right, guys, that's everything that for now. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed the content. And if you are totally new, consider subscribing. I would love to have you here. Join the community. And uh, yeah, guys, till next time, stay safe, make some awesome trades. Ciao, ciao.